The Sub-Saharan Africa is, geographically, the area of the continent of Africa that lies south of the Sahara. According to the United Nations, it consists of all African countries that are fully or partially located south of the Sahara. It contrasts with North Africa, whose territories are part of the League of Arab States within the Arab world. The Arabic-speaking states of Somalia, Djibouti, Comoros and the Arabic-speaking Mauritania are however geographically in sub-Saharan Africa, although they are members of the Arab League as well. The UN Development Programme lists 46 of Africa's 54 countries as sub-Saharan, excluding Algeria, Djibouti, Egypt, Libya, Morocco, Somalia, Sudan and Tunisia. The Sahel is the transitional zone in between the Sahara and the tropical savanna of the Sudan region and farther south the forest savanna mosaic of tropical Africa. Since probably 3500 BCE, the Saharan and Sub-Saharan regions of Africa have been separated by the extremely harsh climate of the sparsely populated Sahara, forming an effective barrier interrupted by only the Nile in Sudan, though the Nile was blocked by the river's cataracts. The Sahara pump theory explains how flora and fauna including Homo sapiens left Africa to penetrate the Middle East and beyond. African pluvial periods are associated with a wet Sahara phase, during which larger lakes and more rivers existed. The use of the term has been criticized because it refers to the South only by cartography conventions and projects a connotation of inferiority, a vestige of colonialism, which some say, divided Africa into European terms of homogeneity. Etymology Geographers historically divided the region into several distinct ethnographic sections based on each area's respective inhabitants. Commentators in Arabic in the medieval period used the general term Balad as Sudan, land of the blacks, for the vast Sudan region, an expression denoting West and Central Africa, or sometimes extending from the coast of West Africa to Western Sudan. Its equivalent in Southeast Africa was Zanj, country of the blacks, which was situated in the vicinity of the Great Lakes region. The geographers drew an explicit ethnographic distinction between the Sudan region and its analog Zanj, from the area to their extreme east on the Red Sea coast in the Horn of Africa. In modern day Ethiopia and Eritrea was Al Habish or Abyssinia, which was inhabited by the Habish or Abyssinians, who were the forebears of the Habisha. In northern Somalia was Barbara or the Balad al Barber, land of the Berbers, which was inhabited by the eastern Baraba or Barbaroi, as the ancestors of the Somalis were referred to by medieval Arab and ancient Greek geographers, respectively. In the 19th and 20th centuries, the populations south of the Sahara were divided into three broad ancestral groups Hamites and Semites in the Horn of Africa and Sahel related to those in North Africa, who spoke languages belonging to the Afroasiatic family, Negroes in most of the rest of the subcontinent, hence, the former toponym Black Africa for Tropical Africa, who spoke languages belonging to the Niger-Congo and Nilo-Saharan families, and Khoisan in southern Africa, who spoke languages belonging to the Khoisan family. <laughs> Climate zones and ecoregions Sub-Saharan Africa has a wide variety of climate zones or biomes. South Africa and the Democratic Republic of the Congo in particular are considered megadiverse countries. It has a dry winter season and a wet summer season. The Sahel shoots across all of Africa at a latitude of about 10 degrees to 15 degrees north. Countries that include parts of the Sahara Desert proper in their northern territories and parts of the Sahel in their southern region include Mauritania, Mali, Niger, Chad and Sudan. The Sahel has a hot semi-arid climate. South of the Sahel, there is a belt of savanna, Guinean forest savanna mosaic, northern Congolian forest savanna mosaic, widening to include most of South Sudan and Ethiopia in the east, East Sudanese savanna. The Horn of Africa globally includes hot desert climate along the coast, but hot semi-arid climate can be found much more in the interior, contrasting with savanna and moist broadleaf forests in the interior of Ethiopia. Tropical Africa encompasses tropical rainforests stretching along the southern coast of West Africa and across most of Central Africa the Congo west of the African Great Lakes. The eastern Miombo woodlands are an ecoregion of Tanzania, Malawi, and Mozambique. The Serengeti ecosystem is located in northwestern Tanzania and extends to southwestern Kenya. The Kalahari Basin includes the Kalahari Desert, which is surrounded by a belt of semi-desert. 
The bushveld is a tropical savanna ecoregion of southern Africa. The Karoo is a semi-desert in western South Africa. History Prehistory According to paleontology, early hominid skull anatomy was similar to that of their close cousins, the great African forest apes, gorilla and chimpanzee. However, they had adopted a bipedal locomotion and freed hands, giving them a crucial advantage enabling them to live in both forested areas and on the open savanna at a time when Africa was drying up, with savanna encroaching on forested areas. This occurred 10 million to 5 million years ago. By 3 million years ago, several Australopithecine hominid species had developed throughout southern, eastern, and central Africa. They were tool users rather than tool manufacturers. The next major evolutionary step occurred around 2.3 million BCE, when primitive stone tools were used to scavenge the carcasses of animals killed by other predators, both for their meat and their marrow. In hunting, H. habilis was most likely not capable of competing with large predators and was more prey than hunter, although H. habilis probably did steal eggs from nests and may have been able to catch small game and weakened larger prey such as cubs and older animals. The tools were classed as Oldowan, roughly 1.8 million years ago. Homo ergaster first appeared in the fossil record in Africa. From Homo ergaster, Homo erectus upright man evolved 1.5 million years ago. Some of the earlier representatives of this species were small-brained and used primitive stone tools, much like H. habilis. The brain later grew in size, and H. erectus eventually developed a more complex stone tool technology called the Acheulean. Potentially the first hominid to engage in hunting, H. erectus mastered the art of making fire. They were the first hominids to leave Africa, going on to colonize the entire Old World, and perhaps later on giving rise to Homo floresiensis. Although some recent writers suggest that H. Georgicus, a H. habilis descendant, was the first and most primitive hominid to ever live outside Africa, many scientists consider H. Georgicus to be an early and primitive member of the H. erectus species. The fossil record shows Homo sapiens lived in southern and eastern Africa anywhere from 100,000 to 150,000 years ago. Between 50,000 and 60,000 years ago, their expansion out of Africa launched the colonization of the planet by modern humans. By 10,000 BCE, Homo sapiens had spread to all corners of the world. This dispersal of the human species is suggested by linguistic, cultural and genetic evidence. After the Sahara became a desert, it did not present a totally impenetrable barrier for travelers between north and south because of the application of animal husbandry towards carrying water, food, and supplies across the desert. Prior to the introduction of the camel, the use of oxen, mule, and horses for desert crossing was common, and trade routes followed chains of oases that were strung across the desert. The trans-Saharan trade was in full motion by 500 BCE with Carthage being a major economic force for its establishment. It is thought that the camel was first brought to Egypt after the Persian Empire conquered Egypt in 525 BCE, although large herds did not become common enough in North Africa for camels to be the pack animal of choice for the trans-Saharan trade. Central Africa Archaeological finds in Central Africa provide evidence of human settlement that may date back over 10,000 years. According to Zongato and Hall, there is evidence of iron smelting in the Central African Republic and Cameroon that may date back to 3000 to 2500 BCE. Extensive walled sites and settlements have recently been found in Zilam, Chad. The area is located approximately 60 kilometers 37 miles southwest of Lake Chad and has been radiocarbon dated to the 1st millennium BCE trade and improved agricultural techniques supported more sophisticated societies leading to the early civilizations of Sao, Kanem, Bornu, Shilak, Bagarmi and Wadai following the Bantu migration into Central Africa during the 14th century the Luba kingdom in southeast Congo came about under a king whose political authority derived from religious spiritual legitimacy. The kingdom controlled agriculture and regional trade of salt and iron from the north and copper from the Zambian, Congo copper belt, rival kingship factions which split from the Luba kingdom later moved among the Lunda people, marrying into its elite and laying the foundation of the Lunda Empire in the 16th century. 
The ruling dynasty centralized authority among the Lunda under the Mwata Yamio or Mawaant Yaav. The Mwata Yamio's legitimacy, like that of the Luba king, came from being viewed as a spiritual religious guardian. This imperial cult or system of divine kings was spread to most of Central Africa by rivals in kingship migrating and forming new states. Many new states received legitimacy by claiming descent from the Lunda dynasties. The Kingdom of Congo existed from the Atlantic west to the Kwango River to the east. During the 15th century, the Bakongo farming community was united with its capital at M. Banza Congo, under the king title, Manakongo. Other significant states and peoples included the Cuba Kingdom, producers of the famous raffia cloth, the Eastern Lunda, Bemba, Burundi, Rwanda, and the Kingdom of Ndongo. <laughs> Horn of Africa the Aksumite Empire spanned the southern Sahara, South Arabia and the Sahel along the western shore of the Red Sea. Located in northern Ethiopia and Eritrea, Aksum was deeply involved in the trade network between India and the Mediterranean. Growing from the Proto-Aksumite Iron Age period circa the 4th century BCE, it rose to prominence by the 1st century CE. The Aksumites constructed monolithic stelae to cover the graves of their kings, such as King Azana's steel. The later Zagwe dynasty, established in the 12th century, built churches out of solid rock. These rock-hewn structures include the Church of St. George at Lalibela. In ancient Somalia, city-states flourished such as Opon, Mosilon and Malo that competed with the Sabaeans, Parthians, and Aksumites for the wealthy Indo-Greco-Roman trade. In the Middle Ages, several powerful Somali empires dominated the regional trade including the Ajuran Sultanate, which excelled in hydraulic engineering and fortress building, the Sultanate of Adal, whose general Ahmed Guri was the first African commander in history to use cannon warfare on the continent during Adal's conquest of the Ethiopian Empire, and the Geledi Sultanate, whose military dominance forced governors of the Omani Empire north of the city of Lamu to pay tribute to the Somali Sultan Ahmed Yusuf. In the late 19th century after the Berlin Conference had ended, European empires sailed with their armies to the Horn of Africa. The imperial armies in Somalia alarmed the dervish leader Muhammad Abdullah Hassan, who gathered Somali soldiers from across the Horn of Africa and began one of the longest anti-colonial wars known as the Somaliland Campaign. <laughs> Southern Africa Settlements of Bantu-speaking peoples, who were iron-using agriculturists and herdsmen, were already present south of the Limpopo River by the 4th or 5th century displacing and absorbing the original Khoisan speakers. They slowly moved south, and the earliest ironworks in modern-day KwaZulu Natal Province are believed to date from around 1050. The southernmost group was the Kosa people, whose language incorporates certain linguistic traits from the earlier Khoisan inhabitants. They reached the Fish River in today's eastern Cape Province. Monomotapa was a medieval kingdom c. 1250-1629, which existed between the Zambezi and Limpopo rivers of southern Africa in the territory of modern-day Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Its old capital was located at Great Zimbabwe. In 1487, Bartolomeu Dias became the first European to reach the southernmost tip of Africa. In 1652, a victualling station was established at the Cape of Good Hope by Jan van Riebeek on behalf of the Dutch East India Company. For most of the 17th and 18th centuries, the slowly expanding settlement was a Dutch possession. Great Britain seized the Cape of Good Hope area in 1795, ostensibly to prevent it from falling into the hands of the French but also to use Cape Town in particular as a stop on the route to Australia and India. It was later returned to the Dutch in 1803, but soon afterwards the Dutch East India Company declared bankruptcy, and the British annexed the Cape Colony in 1806. The Zulu Kingdom was a southern African tribal state in what is now KwaZulu-Natal in southeastern South Africa. The small kingdom gained world fame during and after the Anglo-Zulu War. During the 1950s and early 1960s, most sub-Saharan African nations achieved independence from colonial rule. Topic. Southeast Africa Topic. 
According to the theory of recent African origin of modern humans, the mainstream position held within the scientific community, all humans originate from either Southeast Africa or the Horn of Africa. During the first millennium CE, Nilotic and Bantu-speaking peoples moved into the region, and the latter now account for three-quarters of Kenya's population. On the coastal section of Southeast Africa, a mixed Bantu community developed through contact with Muslim Arab and Persian traders, leading to the development of the mixed Arab, Persian and African Swahili city-states. The Swahili culture that emerged from these exchanges evinces many Arab and Islamic influences not seen in traditional Bantu culture, as do the many Afro-Arab members of the Bantu Swahili people. With its original speech community centered on the coastal parts of Tanzania particularly Zanzibar and Kenya, a seaboard referred to as the Swahili coast, the Bantu Swahili language contains many Arabic loan words as a consequence of these interactions. The earliest Bantu inhabitants of the southeast coast of Kenya and Tanzania encountered by these later Arab and Persian settlers have been variously identified with the trading settlements of Rapta, Azania and Manuthias referenced in early Greek and Chinese writings from 50 CE to 500 CE, ultimately giving rise to the name for Tanzania. These early writings perhaps document the first wave of Bantu settlers to reach Southeast Africa during their migration. Between the 14th and 15th centuries, large medieval Southeast African kingdoms and states emerged, such as the Buganda and Karagwe kingdoms of Uganda and Tanzania. During the early 1960s, the Southeast African nations achieved independence from colonial rule. Topic: Sudan Topic. Nubia in present-day northern Sudan and southernmost of Egypt, was referred to as Ethiopia, land of the burnt face. By the Greeks, Nubia at her greatest phase is considered sub-Saharan Africa's oldest urban civilization. Nubia was a major source of gold for the ancient world. Nubians built famous structures and numerous pyramids. Sudan, the site of ancient Nubia, has more pyramids than anywhere in the world. Western Africa The Bantu expansion is a major migration movement originating in West Africa around 2500 BCE, reaching East and Central Africa by 1000 BCE and Southern Africa by the early centuries CE. The Gene di Geno city-state flourished from 250 BCE to 900 CE and was influential to the development of the Ghana Empire. The Nok culture is known from a type of terracotta figure found in Nigeria, dating to between 500 BCE and 200 CE. There were a number of medieval empires of the Southern Sahara and the Sahel, based on trans-Saharan trade, including the Ghana Empire and the Mali Empire, Songhai Empire, the Kanem Empire and the subsequent Bornu Empire. They built stone structures like in Tichet, but mainly constructed in adobe. The Great Mosque of Dijeni is most reflective of Sahelian architecture and is the largest adobe building in the world. In the forest zone, several states and empires emerged. The Ashanti Empire arose in the 16th century in modern-day Ghana and Ivory Coast. The Kingdom of Nri, was established by the Igbo in the 11th century. Nri was famous for having a priest king who wielded no military power. NRI was a rare African state which was a haven for freed slaves and outcasts who sought refuge in their territory. Other major states included the kingdoms of Ife and Oyo in the western bloc of Nigeria which became prominent about 700 to 900 and 1400 respectively, and center of Yoruba culture. The Yoruba's built massive mud walls around their cities, the most famous being Sungbo's Arado. Another prominent kingdom in southwestern Nigeria was the Kingdom of Benin 9th-11th century whose power lasted between the 15th and 19th century and was one of the greatest empires of African history documented all over the world. Their dominance reached as far as the well-known city of Echo which was named Lagos by the Portuguese traders and other early European settlers. The Edo-speaking people of Benin are known for their famous bronze casting and rich coral, wealth, ancient science and technology and the walls of Benin, which is the largest man-made structure in the world. In the 18th century, the Oyo and the Aero Confederacy were responsible for most of the slaves exported from Nigeria, with Great Britain, France and Portugal shipping the majority of the slaves. Following the Napoleonic Wars, the British expanded trade with the Nigerian interior. 
In 1885, British claims to a West African sphere of influence received international recognition, and in the following year the Royal Niger Company was chartered under the leadership of Sir George Taubman Goldie. In 1900, the company's territory came under the control of the British government, which moved to consolidate its hold over the area of modern Nigeria. On 1 January 1901, Nigeria became a British protectorate, part of the British Empire, the foremost world power at the time. By 1960, most of the region achieved independence from colonial rule. Demographics Population Topic. According to the 2017 revision of the World Population Prospects, the population of Sub-Saharan Africa was 995,694,907 in 2016. The current growth rate is 2.3%. The UN predicts for the region a population between 1.5 and 2 billion by 2050 with a population density of 80 per square kilometers compared to 170 for Western Europe, 140 for Asia and 30 for the Americas. Sub-Saharan African countries top the list of countries and territories by fertility rate with 40 of the highest 50, all with TFR greater than 4 in 2008. All are above the world average except South Africa and Seychelles. More than 40% of the population in sub-Saharan countries is younger than 15 years old, as well as in Sudan, with the exception of South Africa. GDP per capita 2006 in dollars US dollar life exp life expectancy 2006 literacy male female 2006 trans transparency 2009 hdi human development index eodbr ease of doing business rank june 2008 through may 2009 sap starting a business june 2008 through may 2009 pfi press freedom index 2009 Topic. Languages and ethnic groups Topic. Sub Saharan Africa contains over 1,000 languages, which is around one sixth of the world's total. Topic. Afroasiatic Topic. With the exception of the extinct Sumerian a language isolate of Mesopotamia, Afro-Asiatic has the oldest documented history of any language family in the world. Egyptian was recorded as early as 3200 BCE. The Semitic branch was recorded as early as 2900 BCE in the form of the Akkadian language of Mesopotamia Assyria and Babylonia and circa 2500 BCE in the form of the Eblate language of northeastern Syria. The distribution of the Afroasiatic languages within Africa is principally concentrated in North Africa and the Horn of Africa. Languages belonging to the family's Berber branch are mainly spoken in the north, with its speech area extending into the Sahel northern Mauritania, northern Mali, northern Niger. The Cushitic branch of Afroasiatic is centered in the Horn, and is also spoken in the Nile Valley and parts of the African Great Lakes region. Additionally, the Semitic branch of the family, in the form of Arabic, is widely spoken in the parts of Africa that are within the Arab world. South Semitic languages are also spoken in parts of the Horn of Africa Ethiopia, Eritrea. The Chadic branch is distributed in Central and West Africa. Hausa, its most widely spoken language, serves as a lingua franca in West Africa Niger, Ghana, Togo, Benin, Cameroon, and Chad. Khoisan <coughs> <coughs> The several families lumped under the term Khoisan include languages indigenous to southern Africa and Tanzania, though some, such as the Khoi languages, appear to have moved to their current locations not long before the Bantu expansion. In southern Africa, their speakers are the Khoi Khoi and San Bushmen, in southeast Africa, the Sanda and Hadza. <laughs> Niger-Congo the Niger-Congo family is the largest in the world in terms of the number of languages 1436 it contains. The vast majority of languages of this family are tonal such as Yoruba, and Igbo, however, others such as Fulani and Wolof are not. A major branch of the Niger-Congo languages is Bantu, which covers a greater geographic area than the rest of the family. 
Bantu speakers represent the majority of inhabitants in southern, central and southeastern Africa, though San, Pygmy, and Nilotic groups, respectively, can also be found in those regions. Bantu speakers can also be found in parts of Central Africa such as the Gabon, Equatorial Guinea and Southern Cameroon. Swahili, a Bantu language with many Arabic, Persian and other Middle Eastern and South Asian loan words, developed as a lingua franca for trade between the different peoples in Southeastern Africa. In the Kalahari Desert of Southern Africa, the distinct people known as Bushmen also San, closely related to, but distinct from, Hottentots, have long been present. The San evince unique physical traits, and are the indigenous people of Southern Africa. Pygmies are the pre-Bantu indigenous peoples of Central Africa. <laughs> Nilo-Saharan the Nilo-Saharan languages are concentrated in the upper parts of the Chari and Nile rivers of Central Africa and Southeast Africa. They are principally spoken by Nilotic peoples and are also spoken in Sudan among the Fur, Masalit, Nubian and Zaghawa peoples and in West and Central Africa among the Songhai, Zarma and Kanori. The Old Nubian language is also a member of this family. Major languages of Africa by region, family and number of primary language speakers in millions, Topic. Genetic history Topic. A 2017 archaeogenetic study of prehistoric fossils in sub-Saharan Africa observed a wide-ranging early presence of Khoisan populations in the region. Khoisan-related ancestry was inferred to have contributed to two-thirds of the ancestry of hunter-gatherer populations inhabiting Malawi between 8,100 and 2,500 years ago and to one-third of the ancestry of hunter-gatherers inhabiting Tanzania as late as 1,400 years ago. Also in Tanzania, a pastoralist individual was found to carry ancestry related to the pre-pottery Levant. These diverse early ancestries are believed to have been largely replaced after the Bantu expansion into Central, Eastern and Southern Africa. A 2009 genetic clustering study, which genotyped 1327 polymorphic markers in various African populations, identified six ancestral clusters through Bayesian analysis and 14 ancestral clusters through structure analysis within the continent. The clustering corresponded closely with ethnicity, culture, and language. In addition, whole genome sequencing analysis of modern populations inhabiting sub Saharan Africa has observed several primary inferred ancestry components a pygmy related component carried by the Bhuti and Biaka pygmies in Central Africa, a Khoisan related component carried by Khoisan speaking populations in Southern Africa, a Niger Congo related component carried by Niger Congo speaking populations throughout sub Saharan Africa, a Nilo Saharan Saharan related component carried by Nilo Saharan speaking populations in the Nile Valley and African Great Lakes, and a West Eurasian related component carried by Afroasiatic speaking populations in the Horn of Africa and Nile Valley. <laughs> Major cities Sub Saharan Africa has several large cities. Lagos is a city in the Nigerian state of Lagos. The city, with its adjoining conurbation, is the most populous in Nigeria, and the second most populous on the African continent after Cairo, Egypt. It is one of the fastest growing cities in the world, and also one of the most populous urban agglomerations. Lagos is a major financial center in Africa, the megacity has the highest GDP, and also houses one of the largest and busiest ports on the continent. Dar es Salaam is the former capital as well as the most populous city in Tanzania and a regionally important economic center. It is located on the Swahili coast. Johannesburg is the largest city in South Africa. It is the provincial capital and largest city in Gauteng, which is the wealthiest province in South Africa. While Johannesburg is not one of South Africa's three capital cities, it is the seat of the Constitutional Court. The city is located in the mineral-rich Witwatersrand range of hills and is the center of large-scale gold and diamond trade Nairobi is the capital and the largest city of Kenya. The name comes from the Maasai phrase Enkare Nairobi, which translates to cool water, a reference to the Nairobi River which flows through the city. The city is popularly referred to as the Green City in the Sun. Other major cities in sub Saharan Africa include Abidjan, Cape Town, Kinshasa, Luanda, Mogadishu, Addis Ababa. 
Topic economy topic In the mid-2010s, private capital flows to sub-Saharan Africa, primarily from the BRICs, private sector investment portfolios, and remittances, began to exceed official development assistance. As of 2011, Africa is one of the fastest developing regions in the world. Six of the world's ten fastest growing economies over the previous decade were situated below the Sahara, with the remaining four in East and Central Asia. Between 2011 and 2015, the economic growth rate of the average nation in Africa is expected to surpass that of the average nation in Asia. Sub-Saharan Africa is by then projected to contribute seven out of the ten fastest growing economies in the world. According to the World Bank, the economic growth rate in the region had risen to 4.7% in 2013, with a rate of 5.2% forecasted for 2014. This continued rise was attributed to increasing investment in infrastructure and resources as well as steady expenditure per household. Topic energy and power topic As of 2009, 50% of Africa is rural with no access to electricity. Africa generates 47 gigawatts of electricity, less than 0.6% of the global market share. Many countries are affected by power shortages, because of rising prices in commodities such as coal and oil, thermal sources of energy are proving to be too expensive for power generation. Sub-Saharan Africa is expected to build additional hydropower generation capacity of at least 20,165 megawatts by 2014. The region has the potential to generate 1,750 terawatt-hours of energy, of which only 7% has been explored. The failure to exploit its full energy potential is largely due to significant underinvestment, as at least four times as much approximately $23 billion a year and what is currently spent is invested in operating high-cost power systems and not on expanding the infrastructure. African governments are taking advantage of the readily available water resources to broaden their energy mix. Hydro turbine markets in sub-Saharan Africa generated revenues of $120 million in 2007 and is estimated to reach $425 million. Asian countries, notably China, India, and Japan, are playing an active role in power projects across the African continent. The majority of these power projects are hydro-based because of China's vast experience in the construction of hydro power projects and part of the Energy and Power Growth Partnership Services Program. With electrification numbers, sub-Saharan Africa with access to the Sahara and being in the tropical zones has massive potential for solar photovoltaic electrical potential. 600 million people could be served with electricity based on its photovoltaic potential. China is promising to train 10,000 technicians from Africa and other developing countries in the use of solar energy technologies over the next five years. Training African technicians to use solar power is part of the China-Africa Science and Technology Cooperation Agreement signed by Chinese Science Minister Xu Guanhua and African counterparts during Premier Wen Jiabao's visit to Ethiopia in December 2003, the new Partnership for Africa. S Development NEPAD is developing an integrated, continent-wide energy strategy. This has been funded by, amongst others, the African Development Bank AFDB and the EU Africa Infrastructure Trust Fund. These projects must be sustainable, involve a cross-border dimension and or have a regional impact, involve public and private capital, contribute to poverty alleviation and economic development, involve at least one country in sub-Saharan Africa. Media Radio is the major source of information in sub-Saharan Africa. Average coverage stands at more than a third of the population. Countries such as Gabon, Seychelles, and South Africa boast almost 100% penetration. Only five countries, Burundi, Djibouti, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somalia, still have a penetration of less than 10%. Broadband penetration outside of South Africa has been limited where it is exorbitantly expensive. Access to the Internet via cell phones is on the rise. Television is the second major source of information. Because of power shortages, the spread of television viewing has been limited. 8% have television, a total of 62 million. But those in the television industry view the region as an untapped green market. Digital television and pay for service are on the rise. Topic. Infrastructure Topic. 
According to researchers at the Overseas Development Institute, the lack of infrastructure in many developing countries represents one of the most significant limitations to economic growth and achievement of the Millennium Development Goals (MDGs). Less than 40% of rural Africans live within 2 kilometers of an all-season road, the lowest level of rural accessibility in the developing world. Spending on roads averages just below 2% of GDP with varying degree among countries. This compares with 1% of GDP that is typical in industrialized countries, and 2-3% of GDP found in fast-growing emerging economies. Although the level of effort is high relative to the size of Africa's economies, it remains little in absolute terms, with low-income countries spending an average of about $7 per capita per year. Infrastructure investments and maintenance can be very expensive, especially in such as areas as landlocked, rural and sparsely populated countries in Africa. Infrastructure investments contributed to Africa's growth, and increased investment is necessary to maintain growth and tackle poverty. The returns to investment in infrastructure are very significant, with on average 30-40% returns for telecommunications ICT investments, over 40% for electricity generation and 80% for roads. In Africa, it is argued that in order to meet the MDGs by 2015 infrastructure investments would need to reach about 15% of GDP around $93 billion a year. Currently, the source of financing varies significantly across sectors. Some sectors are dominated by state spending, others by overseas development aid and yet others by private investors. In sub-Saharan Africa, the state spends around $9.4 billion out of a total of $24.9 billion. In irrigation, SSA states represent almost all spending, in transport and energy a majority of investment is state spending, in ICT and water supply and sanitation, the private sector represents the majority of capital expenditure. Overall, aid, the private sector and non-OECD financiers between them exceed state spending. The private sector spending alone equals state capital expenditure, though the majority is focused on ICT infrastructure investments. External financing increased from $7 billion 2002 to $27 billion 2009. China, in particular, has emerged as an important investor. Oil and minerals Topic. The region is a major exporter to the world of gold, uranium, chromium, vanadium, antimony, coltan, bauxite, iron ore, copper and manganese. South Africa is a major exporter of manganese as well as chromium. A 2001 estimate is that 42% of the world's reserves of chromium may be found in South Africa. South Africa is the largest producer of platinum, with 80% of the total world's annual mine production and 88% of the world's platinum reserve. Sub-Saharan Africa produces 33% of the world's bauxite, with Guinea as the major supplier. Zambia is a major producer of copper. Democratic Republic of Congo is a major source of coltan. Production from Congo is very small but has 80% of proven reserves. Sub-Saharan Africa is a major producer of gold, producing up to 30% of global production. Major suppliers are South Africa, Ghana, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Guinea, and Mali. South Africa had been first in the world in terms of gold production since 1905, but in 2007 it moved to second place, according to GFMS, the Precious Metals Consultancy. Uranium is major commodity from the region. Significant suppliers are Niger, Namibia, and South Africa. Namibia was the number one supplier from Sub-Saharan Africa in 2008. The region produces 49% of the world's diamonds. By 2015, it is estimated that 25% of North American oil will be from Sub-Saharan Africa, ahead of the Middle East. Sub-Saharan Africa has been the focus of an intense race for oil by the West, China, India, and other emerging economies, even though it holds only 10% of proven oil reserves, less than the Middle East. This race has been referred to as the second scramble for Africa. All reasons for this global scramble come from the reserve's economic benefits. Transportation cost is low and no pipelines have to be laid as in Central Asia. Almost all reserves are offshore, so political turmoil within the host country will not directly interfere with operations. Sub-Saharan oil is viscous, with a very low sulfur content. 
This quickens the refining process and effectively reduces costs. New sources of oil are being located in sub-Saharan Africa more frequently than anywhere else. Of all new sources of oil, one-third are in sub-Saharan Africa. Topic. Agriculture Topic. Sub-Saharan Africa has more variety of grains than anywhere in the world. Between 13,000 and 11,000 BCE wild grains began to be collected as a source of food in the cataract region of the Nile, south of Egypt. The collecting of wild grains as source of food spread to Syria, parts of Turkey, and Iran by the 11th millennium BCE. By the 10th and 9th millennia Southwest Asians domesticated their wild grains, wheat, and barley after the notion of collecting wild grains spread from the Nile. Numerous crops have been domesticated in the region and spread to other parts of the world. These crops included sorghum, castor beans, coffee, cotton okra, black-eyed peas, watermelon, gourd, and pearl millet. Other domesticated crops included teff, enset, African rice, yams, kola nuts, oil palm, and raffia palm. Domesticated animals include the guinea fowl and the donkey. Agriculture represents 20% to 30% of GDP and 50% of exports. In some cases, 60% to 90% of the labor force are employed in agriculture. Most agricultural activity is subsistence farming. This has made agricultural activity vulnerable to climate change and global warming. Biotechnology has been advocated to create high-yield, pest and environmentally resistant crops in the hands of small farmers. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is a strong advocate and donor to this cause. Biotechnology and GM crops have met resistance both by natives and environmental groups. Cash crops include cotton, coffee, tea, cocoa, sugar, and tobacco. The OECD says Africa has the potential to become an agricultural superblock if it can unlock the wealth of the savannas by allowing farmers to use their land as collateral for credit. There is such international interest in sub Saharan agriculture that the World Bank increased its financing of African agricultural programs to $1.3 billion in the 2011 fiscal year. Recently, there has been a trend to purchase large tracts of land in sub Sahara for agricultural use by developing countries. Early in 2009, George Soros highlighted a new farmland buying frenzy caused by growing population, scarce water supplies, and climate change. Chinese interests bought up large swathes of Senegal to supply it with sesame. Aggressive moves by China, South Korea and Gulf states to buy vast tracts of agricultural land in sub-Saharan Africa could soon be limited by a new global international protocol. Education <inaudible> 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 40% of African scientists live in OECD countries, predominantly in Europe, the United States and Canada. This has been described as an African brain drain. According to Naledi Pander, the South African Minister of Science and Technology, even with the drain enrollments in sub-Saharan African universities tripled between 1991 and 2005, expanding at an annual rate of 8.7%, which is one of the highest regional growth rates in the world. In the last 10 to 15 years interest in pursuing university-level degrees abroad has increased. According to the CIA, low global literacy rates are concentrated in sub-Saharan Africa, West Asia and South Asia. However, the literacy rates in sub-Saharan Africa vary significantly between countries. The highest registered literacy rate in the region is in Zimbabwe, 90.7%, 2003 est, while the lowest literacy rate is in South Sudan, 27%. Sub-Saharan African countries spent an average of 0.3% of their GDP on science and technology on in 2007. This represents an increase from $1.8 billion in 2002 to $2.8 billion in 2007, a 50% increase in spending. Topic. Major progress in access to education Topic. At the World Conference held in Jomshan, Thailand in 1990, delegates from 155 countries and representatives of some 150 organizations gathered with the goal to promote universal primary education and the radical reduction of illiteracy before the end of the decade. The World Education Forum, held ten years later in Dakar, Senegal, provided the opportunity to reiterate and reinforce these goals. 
This initiative contributed to having education made a priority of the Millennium Development Goals in 2000, with the aim of achieving universal schooling (MDG2) and eliminating gender disparities, especially in primary and secondary education (MDG3). Since the World Education Forum in Dakar, considerable efforts have been made to respond to these demographic challenges in terms of education. The amount of funds raised has been decisive. Between 1999 and 2010, public spending on education as a percentage of gross national product GNP increased by 5% per year in sub-Saharan Africa, with major variations between countries, with percentages varying from 1.8% in Cameroon to over 6% in Burundi. As of 2015, governments in sub-Saharan Africa spend on average 18% of their total budget on education, against 15% in the rest of the world. In the years immediately after the Dakar Forum, the efforts made by African states towards achieving EFA produced multiple results in sub-Saharan Africa. The greatest advance was in access to primary education, which governments had made their absolute priority. The number of children in primary school in sub-Saharan Africa thus rose from 82 million in 1999 to 136.4 million in 2011. In Niger for example, the number of children entering school increased more than three and a half times between 1999 and 2011. In Ethiopia, over the same period, over 8.5 million more children were admitted to primary school. The net rate of first-year access in sub-Saharan Africa has thus risen by 19 points in 12 years, from 58% in 1999 to 77% in 2011. Despite the considerable efforts, the latest available data from the UNESCO Institute for Statistics estimates that, for 2012, there were still 57.8 million children who were not in school. Of these, 29.6 million were in sub-Saharan Africa alone, a figure which has not changed for several years. Many sub-Saharan countries have notably included the first year of secondary school in basic education. In Rwanda, the first year of secondary school was attached to primary education in 2009, which significantly increased the number of pupils enrolled at this level of education. In 2012 the primary completion rate PCR, which measures the proportion of children reaching the final year of primary school, was 70%, meaning that more than 3 out of 10 children entering primary school do not reach the final primary year. <laughs> Health in 1987, the Bamako Initiative Conference organized by the World Health Organization was held in Bamako, the capital of Mali, and helped reshape the health policy of sub-Saharan Africa. The new strategy dramatically increased accessibility through community-based healthcare reform, resulting in more efficient and equitable provision of services. A comprehensive approach strategy was extended to all areas of health care, with subsequent improvement in the health care indicators and improvement in health care efficiency and cost. In 2011, Sub Saharan Africa was home to 69% of all people living with HIV, AIDS worldwide. In response, a number of initiatives have been launched to educate the public on HIV, AIDS. Among these are combination prevention programs, considered to be the most effective initiative, the Abstinence, Be Faithful, Use a Condom campaign, and the Desmond Tutu HIV Foundation's outreach programs. According to a 2013 special report issued by the Joint United Nations Program on HIV, AIDS the number of HIV-positive people in Africa receiving antiretroviral treatment in 2012 was over seven times the number receiving treatment in 2005, with an almost one million added in the last year alone. The number of AIDS-related deaths in sub-Saharan Africa in 2011 was 33% less than the number in 2005. The number of new HIV infections in sub-Saharan Africa in 2011 was 25% less than the number in 2001. Malaria is an endemic illness in sub-Saharan Africa, where the majority of malaria cases and deaths worldwide occur. Routine immunization has been introduced in order to prevent measles. Oncocerciasis, river blindness, a common cause of blindness, is also endemic to parts of the region. More than 99% of people affected by the illness worldwide live in 31 countries therein. In response, the African Programme for Oncocerciasis Control APOC, was launched in 1995 with the aim of controlling the disease. Maternal mortality is another challenge, with more than half of maternal deaths in the world occurring in sub-Saharan Africa. 
However, there has generally been progress here as well, as a number of countries in the region have halved their levels of maternal mortality since 1990. Additionally, the African Union in July 2003 ratified the Maputo Protocol, which pledges to prohibit female genital mutilation FGM. .National health systems vary between countries. In Ghana, most health care is provided by the government and largely administered by the Ministry of Health and Ghana Health Services. The healthcare system has five levels of providers, health posts which are first-level primary care for rural areas, health centers and clinics, district hospitals, regional hospitals and tertiary hospitals. These programs are funded by the Government of Ghana, Financial Credits, Internally Generated Fund and Donors Pooled Health Fund. Religion African countries below the Sahara are largely Christian, while those above the Sahara, in North Africa, are predominantly Islamic. There are also Muslim majorities in parts of the Horn of Africa Djibouti and, Somalia and in the Sahel and Sudan regions the Gambia, Sierra Leone, Guinea, Mali, Niger and Senegal, as well as significant Muslim communities in Ethiopia and Eritrea, and on the Swahili coast Tanzania and Kenya. Mauritius is the only country in Africa to have a Hindu majority. Traditional African religions can be broken down into linguistic cultural groups, with common themes. Among Niger-Congo speakers is a belief in a creator god, ancestor spirits, territorial spirits, evil caused by human ill will and neglecting ancestor spirits, priest of territorial spirits. New world religions such as Santeria, Vodun, and Candomblé, would be derived from this world view. Among Nilo-Saharan speakers is the belief in divinity, evil is caused by divine judgment and retribution, prophets as middlemen between divinity and man. Among Afro-Asiatic speakers is henotheism, the belief in one's own gods but accepting the existence of other gods, evil here is caused by malevolent spirits. The Semitic Abrahamic religion of Judaism is comparable to the latter world view. San religion is non-theistic but a belief in a spirit or power of existence which can be tapped in a trance dance, trance healers, traditional religions in sub-Saharan Africa often display complex ontology, cosmology and metaphysics. Mythologies, for example, demonstrated the difficulty fathers of creation had in bringing about order from chaos. Order is what is right and natural and any deviation is chaos. Cosmology and ontology is also neither simple or linear. It defines duality, the material and immaterial, male and female, heaven and earth. Common principles of being and becoming are widespread, among the Dogon, the principle of Ama being and Numo becoming, and among the Bambara, Pemba being and Faro becoming. West African mythology Ashanti mythology Ghana, Dahomey Fon mythology Efik mythology Nigeria, Cameroon Igbo mythology, Nigeria, Cameroon; Sura religion and Sura creation myth, Senegal, Gambia and Mauritania; Yoruba mythology, Nigeria, Benin; Central African mythology, South Sudan; Lotuko mythology, South Sudan; Bushongo mythology, Congo; Bambuti, Pygmy mythology, Congo; Lugbara mythology, Congo; Southeast Africa Kamba mythology, Eastern Kenya. Maasai mythology, Kenya, Tanzania, Southern Africa, Khoisan religion, Lozi mythology, Zambia, Tumbuka mythology, Malawi, Zulu mythology, South Africa. Sub-Saharan traditional divination systems display great sophistication. For example, the Bamana San divination uses well-established symbolic codes that can be reproduced using four bits or marks. A binary system of one or two marks are combined. Random outcomes are generated using a fractal recursive process. It is analogous to a digital circuit but can be reproduced on any surface with one or two marks. This system is widespread in Sub-Saharan Africa. Topic culture Topic Sub-Saharan Africa is diverse, with many communities, villages and cities, each with their own beliefs and traditions. Traditional African societies are communal, they believe that the needs of the many far outweigh an individual needs and achievements. Basically, an individual's keep must be shared with other extended family members. Extended families are made up of various individuals and families who have shared responsibilities within the community. This extended family is one of the core aspects of every African community. 
An African will refer to an older person as auntie or uncle. Siblings of parents will be called father or mother rather than uncle and aunt. Cousins will be called brother or sister. This system can be very difficult for outsiders to understand, however, it is no less important. Also reflecting their communal ethic, Africans are reluctant to stand out in a crowd or to appear different from their neighbors or colleagues, a result of social pressure to avoid offense to group standards and traditions. Women also have a very important role in African culture because they take care of the house and children. Traditionally, men do the heavy work of clearing and plowing the land, women sow the seeds, tend the fields, harvest the crops, haul the water, and bear the major burden for growing the family's food. Despite their work in the fields women are expected to be subservient to men in some African cultures. When young women migrate to cities, this imbalance between the sexes, as well as financial need, often causes young women of lower economic status, who lack education and job training, to have sexual relationships with older men who are established in their work or profession and can afford to support a girlfriend or two. Topic music Topic Traditional Sub-Saharan African music is as diverse as the region's various populations. The common perception of sub-Saharan African music is that it is rhythmic music centered around the drums. It is partially true. A large part of sub-Saharan music, mainly among speakers of Niger-Congo and Nilo-Saharan languages, is rhythmic and centered around the drum. Sub-Saharan music is polyrhythmic, usually consisting of multiple rhythms in one composition. Dance involves moving multiple body parts. These aspect of sub-Saharan music has been transferred to the New World by enslaved sub-Saharan Africans and can be seen in its influence on music forms as samba, jazz, rhythm and blues, rock and roll, salsa, reggae and rap music, but sub-Saharan music involves a lot of music with strings, horns, and very little polyrhythms. Music from the Eastern Sahel and along the Nile, among the Nilo-Saharan, made extensive use of strings and horns in ancient times. Among the Afro-Asiatics, we see extensive use of string instruments. Dancing involves swaying body movements and footwork. Among the San is extensive use of string instruments with emphasis on footwork. Modern sub-Saharan African music has been influenced by music from the New World, jazz, salsa, rhythm and blues, etc., vice versa being influenced by enslaved sub-Saharan Africans. Popular styles are Mbaliks in Senegal and Gambia, Highlife in Ghana, Zoblazo in Ivory Coast, Makasa in Cameroon, Sukus in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kazomba in Angola, and Mabakonga in South Africa. New World styles like salsa, R&B, rap, reggae, and zouk also have widespread popularity. Topic art topic The oldest abstract art in the world is a shell necklace, dated to 82,000 years in the Cave of Pigeons in Tafaralt, eastern Morocco. The second oldest abstract form of art and the oldest rock art is found in the Blumbos Cave at the Cape in South Africa, dated 77,000 years. Sub-Saharan Africa has some of the oldest and most varied style of rock art in the world. Although Sub-Saharan African art is very diverse there are some common themes. One is the use of the human figure. Second, there is a preference for sculpture. Sub-Saharan African art is meant to be experienced in three dimensions, not two. A house is meant to be experienced from all angles. Third, art is meant to be performed. Sub-Saharan Africans have specific name for masks. The name incorporates the sculpture, the dance, and the spirit that incorporates the mask. The name denotes all three elements. Fourth, art that serves a practical function, utilitarian. The artist and craftsman are not separate. A sculpture shaped like a hand can be used as a stool. Fifth, the use of fractals or nonlinear scaling. The shape of the whole is the shape of the parts at different scales. Before the discovery of fractal geometry, Leopold Sadar Senghor, Senegal's first president, referred to this as dynamic symmetry. William Fagg, the British art historian, compared it to the logarithmic mapping of natural growth by biologist Darcy Thompson. Lastly, sub Saharan African art is visually abstract, instead of naturalistic. Sub-Saharan African art represents spiritual notions, social norms, ideas, values, etc. An artist might exaggerated the head of a sculpture in relations to the body not because he does not know anatomy but because he wants to illustrate that the head is the seat of knowledge and wisdom. The visual abstraction of African art was very influential in the works of modernist artists like Pablo Picasso, Henri Matisse, and Jacques Lipchitz. Topic cuisine Topic Sub-Saharan African cuisine Like everything about Africa is very diverse. A lot of regional overlapping occurs, but there are dominant elements region by region. 
West African cuisine can be described as starchy, flavorfully spicy. Dishes include fufu, kenki, couscous, gari, fautu, and banku. Ingredients are of native starchy tubers, yams, cocoyams, and cassava. Grains include millet, sorghum, and rice, usually in the Sahel, are incorporated. Oils include palm oil and shea butter Sahel. One finds recipes that mixes fish and meat. Beverages are palm wine sweet or sour and millet beer. Roasting, baking, boiling, frying, mashing, and spicing are all cooking techniques. Southeast African cuisine especially those of the Swahilis reflects its Islamic, geographical Indian Ocean cultural links. Dishes include ugali, sakuma wiki, and halva. Spices such as curry, saffron, cloves, cinnamon, pomegranate juice, cardamom, ghee, and sage are used, especially among Muslims. Meat includes cattle, sheep, and goats, but is rarely eaten since it's viewed as currency and wealth. In the Horn of Africa, pork and non-fish seafood is avoided by Christians and Muslims. Dairy products and all meats are avoided during Lent by Ethiopians. Maize corn is a major staple. Cornmeal is used to make ugali, a popular dish with different names. Teff is used to make injera or kanjiro Somali bread. Other important foods include enset, noog, lentils, rice, banana, leafy greens, chilies, peppers, coconut milk and tomatoes. Beverages are coffee domesticated in Ethiopia, chai tea, fermented beer from banana or millet. Cooking techniques include roasting and marinating. Central African cuisine connects with all major regions of sub-Saharan Africa, its cuisine reflects that. Ugali and fufu are eaten in the region. Central African cuisine is very starchy and spicy hot. Dominant crops include plantains, cassava, peanuts, chilies, and okra. Meats include beef, chicken, and sometimes exotic meats called bush meat antelope, warthog, crocodile. Widespread spicy hot fish cuisine is one of the differentiating aspects. Mushroom is sometimes used as a meat substitute. Traditional Southern African cuisine surrounds meat. Traditional society typically focused on raising, sheep, goats, and especially cattle. Dishes include braai barbecue meat, sadza, bogobi, pap fermented cornmeal, milk products buttermilk, yogurt. Crops utilized are sorghum, maize corn, pumpkin beans, leafy greens, and cabbage. Beverages include ting fermented sorghum or maize, milk, chibuku milky beer. Influences from the Indian and Malay community can be seen its use of curries, sambals, pickled fish, fish stews, chutney, and samosa. European influences can be seen in cuisines like biltong dried beef strips, potjis stews of maize, onions, tomatoes, French wines, and crueler or coke sister sugar syrup cookie. Topic. Clothing Topic. Like most of the world, sub-Saharan Africans have adopted Western-style clothing. In some country like Zambia, used Western clothing has flooded markets, causing great angst in the retail community. Sub-Saharan Africa boasts its own traditional clothing style. Cotton seems to be the dominant material. In East Africa, one finds extensive use of cotton clothing. Shema, Shama, and Kuta are types of Ethiopian clothing. Kanga are Swahili cloth that comes in rectangular shapes, made of pure cotton, and put together to make clothing. Kittenjas are similar to kangas and kakoi, but are of a thicker cloth, and have an edging only on a long side. Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and South Sudan are some of the African countries where kitenj is worn. In Malawi, Namibia and Zambia, kitenj is known as chitenj. One of the unique materials, which is not a fiber and is used to make clothing is bark cloth, an innovation of the Baganda people of Uganda. It came from the Muchuba tree Ficus natalensis. On Madagascar a type of draped cloth called lamba is worn. In West Africa, again cotton is the material of choice. In the Sahel and other parts of West Africa the bubu and kaftan style of clothing are featured. Kente cloth is created by the Akan people of Ghana and Ivory Coast, from silk of the various moth species in West Africa. Kente comes from the Ashanti Twi word kenten which means basket. It is sometimes used to make dashiki and kufi. Adir is a type of Yoruba cloth that is starch resistant. Raffia cloth and bark cloth are also utilized in the region. In Central Africa, the Cuba people developed raffia cloth from the raffia plant fibers. It was widely used in the region. Bark cloth was also extensively used. 
In southern Africa one finds numerous uses of animal hide and skins for clothing. The NDAU in central Mozambique and the Shona mix hide with bark cloth and cotton cloth. Cotton cloth is referred to as machira. Kosa, Sawana, Sutu, and Swazi also made extensive use of hides. Hides come from cattle, sheep, goat, and elephant. Leopard skins were coveted and were a symbol of kingship in Zulu society. Skins were tanned to form leather, dyed, and embedded with beads. Sports Football soccer is the most popular sport in Sub-Saharan Africa. Sub-Saharan men are its main patrons. Major competitions include the African Champions League, a competition for the best clubs on the continent and the Confederation Cup, a competition primarily for the National Cup winner of each African country. The Africa Cup of Nations is a competition of 16 national teams from various African countries held every two years. South Africa hosted the 2010 FIFA World Cup, a first for a sub-Saharan country. In 2010, Cameroon played in the World Cup for the sixth time, which is the current record for a sub-Saharan team. In 1996 Nigeria won the Olympic gold for football. In 2000 Cameroon maintained the continent's supremacy by winning the title too. Momentous achievements for sub-Saharan African football. Famous sub-Saharan football stars include Abedi Pele, Emmanuel Adebayor, George Weah, Michael Essien, Didier Drugba, Roger Mila, Wankwo Kanu, J.J. Akocha, Bruce Grobelar, Samuel Eto. O, Kolo Torre, Yaya Torre, Sadio Mane and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. The most talented sub-Saharan African football players find themselves courted and sought after by European leagues. There are currently more than 1,000 Africans playing for European clubs. Sub-Saharan Africans have found themselves the target of racism by European fans. FIFA has been trying hard to crack down on racist outbursts during games. Rugby is also popular in Sub-Saharan Africa. The Confederation of African Rugby governs rugby games in the region. South Africa is a major force in the game and won the Rugby World Cup in 1995 and in 2007. Africa is also allotted one guaranteed qualifying place in the Rugby World Cup. Boxing is also a popular sport. Battling Siki the first world champion to come out of sub-Saharan Africa. Countries such as Nigeria, Ghana and South Africa have produced numerous professional world champions such as Dick Tiger, Hogan Bassey, Jerry Kutsi, Samuel Peter, Azuma Nelson and Jake Matlala. Cricket has a following. The African Cricket Association is an international body which oversees cricket in African countries. South Africa and Zimbabwe have their own governing bodies. In 2003 the Cricket World Cup was held in South Africa, first time it was held in Sub-Saharan Africa. Over the years, Ethiopia and Kenya have produced many notable long-distance athletes. Each country has federations that identify and cultivate top talent. Athletes from Ethiopia and Kenya hold, save for two exceptions, all the men's outdoor records for Olympic distance events from 800 meters to the marathon. Famous runners include Haile Gebra Selassie, Kenanisa Bekel, Paul Turgat, and John Chariot Courier. Tourism the development of tourism in this region has been identified as having the ability to create jobs and improve the economy. South Africa, Namibia, Mauritius, Botswana, Ghana, Cape Verde, Tanzania, and Kenya have been identified as having well-developed tourism industries. Cape Town and the surrounding area is very popular with tourists. <laughs> List of countries and regional organization Topic. Only seven African countries are not geopolitically a part of Sub-Saharan Africa, Algeria, Egypt, Libya, Morocco, Tunisia, Western Sahara claimed by Morocco and Sudan, they form the UN subregion of Northern Africa, which also makes up the largest bloc of the Arab world. Nevertheless, some international organizations include Sudan as part of Sub-Saharan Africa. Although a long-standing member of the Arab League, Sudan has around 30% non-Arab populations in the west Darfur, Masalat, Zaghawa, far north Nubian, and south Kordofan, Nuba. Mauritania and Niger only include a band of the Sahel along their southern borders. 
All other African countries have at least significant portions of their territory within Sub-Saharan Africa. <inaudible> Central Africa South Sudan Cap. Juba Kerr. South Sudanese Pound SPP Lang. English Eka's Economic Community of Central African States Angola also in SADC Cap. Luanda Kerr. Angolan Kwanzaa KZ Lang. Portuguese Burundi also in EAC Cap. Bujumbura Kerr. Burundian Franc FBU Lang. French Democratic Republic of the Congo also in SADC Cap. Kinshasa Kerr. Congolese Franc FC Lang. French Rwanda also in EAC Cap. Kigali Kerr. Rwandan Franc RF Lang. Kinyarwanda French, English Sao Tome and Principe Cap. Sao Tome Kerr. Sao Tome and Principe Dabra D flat Lang. Portuguese Smack Economic and Monetary Community of Central Africa Cameroon Cap. Yan de Kerr. Central African CFA Franc FCFA Lang. English, French Central African Republic Cap. Bangui Kerr. Central African CFA Franc FCFA Lang. Sango, French Chad Cap. N'Djamena Kerr. Central African CFA Franc FCFA Lang. French, Arabic Republic of the Congo Cap. Brazzaville Kerr. Central African CFA Franc FCFA Lang. French Equatorial Guinea Cap. Malabo Kerr. Central African CFA Franc FCFA Lang. Spanish, French Gabon Cap. Libreville Kerr. Central African CFA Franc FCFA Lang. French Topic. East Africa Topic. Topic. Horn of Africa Topic. Djibouti Cap. Djibouti Kerr. Djiboutian Franc FDJ Lang. Arabic, French Eritrea Cap. Asmara Kerr. Eritrean Nakfa NFK. Lang. Tigrinya, Arabic, Italian, English Ethiopia Cap. Addis Ababa Kerr. Ethiopian Burr Bridge Lang. Amharic Somalia Cap. Mogadishu Kerr. Somali Shilling So, Shish Lang. Somali, Arabic Topic. Southeast Africa Topic. EAC Burundi also in ECCAS Cap. Bujumbura Kerr. Burundian Franc FBU Lang. Kurundi, French Kenya Cap. Nairobi Kerr. Kenyan Shilling KSH Lang. Swahili, English Rwanda also in ECCAS Cap. Kigali Kerr. Rwandan Franc RF Lang. Kinyarwanda, French, English Tanzania also in SADC Cap. Dodoma Kerr. Tanzanian Shilling TSH Lang. Swahili, English Uganda Cap. Kampala Kerr. Ugandan Shilling USH Lang. Swahili, English Topic. Southern Africa Topic. SADC Southern African Development Community Angola also in ECCAS Cap. Luanda Kerr. Angolan Kwanzaa KZ Lang. Portuguese Botswana Cap. Gaborone Kerr. Botswana Pula P Lang. Sawana, English Comoros Cap. Moroni Kerr. Comorian Franc CF Lang. Comorian, Arabic, French Lesotho Cap. Mazaru Kerr. Lesotho Lodi L. M. Lang. Sasotho, English Madagascar Cap. Antananarivo Kerr. Malagasy Arieri M. G. A. Lang. Malagasy, French Malawi Cap. Lalongwe Kerr. Malawian Kwacha M. K. Lang. English Mauritius Cap. Port Louis Kerr. Mauritian Rupee R. Lang. English Mozambique Cap. Maputo Kerr. Mozambican Medical Mountain Lang. Portuguese Namibia Cap. Windhoek Kerr. Namibian Dollar N Dollar Lang. English Seychelles Cap. Victoria Kerr. Seychellois Rupee Senior SRE Lang. 
Seychellois Creole, English, French South Africa Cap. Bloemfontein, Cape Town, Pretoria Kerr. South African Rand R. Lang. Eleven official languages Swaziland Cap. Mbabane Kerr. Swazi Lilingeni L. E. Lang. Siswati, English Zambia Cap. Lusaka Kerr. Zambian Kwacha Z. K. Lang. English Zimbabwe Cap. Harare Kerr. Zimbabwean Dollar, dollar Lang. English topic Sudan topic Depending on classification Sudan is often not considered part of Sub-Saharan Africa, as it is considered part of North Africa. Sudan Cap. Khartoum Kerr. Sudanese Pound SDG Lang. Arabic and English topic West Africa topic Mauritania Cap. Nouakchott Kerr. Mauritanian Alguia um, sometimes, like Sudan, considered part of North Africa ECOWAS Economic Community of West African States Ivory Coast Cap. Abidjan, Yamasukro Kerr. West African CFA Frank CFA The Gambia Cap. Banjul Kerr. Gambian Delasi D Ghana Cap. Accra Kerr. Ghanaian Saidi GH Guinea Cap. Conakry Kerr. Guinean Frank FG Liberia Cap. Monrovia Kerr. Liberian Dollar L Dollar Nigeria Cap. Abuja Kerr. Nigerian Naira N Sierra Leone Cap. Freetown Kerr. Sierra Leonean Leone La UEMOA West African Economic and Monetary Union Benin Cap. Porto Novo Kerr. West African CFA Frank CFA Burkina Faso Cap. Ouagadougou Kerr. West African CFA Frank CFA Ivory Coast Cap. Abidjan, Yamasukro Kerr. West African CFA Frank CFA Guinea-Bissau Cap. Bissau Kerr. West African CFA Frank CFA Mali Cap. Bamako Kerr. West African CFA Frank CFA Niger Cap. Niamey Kerr. West African CFA Frank CFA Senegal Cap. Dakar Kerr. West African CFA Frank CFA Togo Cap. Lomé Kerr. West African CFA Frank CFA Topic See also Topic Geography of Africa Black People African Diaspora Topic Source Topic This article incorporates text from a free content work. Licensed under CC by SA License Statement, Digital Services for Education in Africa, Agence Française de Développement, Agence Universitaire de la Francophonie, Orange and UNESCO, Agence Française de Développement and UNESCO. To learn how to add open license text to Wikipedia articles, please see Wikipedia, adding open license text to Wikipedia. For information on reusing text from Wikipedia, please see the terms of use. Topic notes topic topic References topic Taking action to reduce poverty in Sub-Saharan Africa, World Bank Publications 1997, ISBN 0-8213-3698-3. Topic further reading topic Cheeto, Diane E. From Chaos to Cohesion, A Regional Approach to Security, Stability, and Development in Sub-Saharan Africa. Carlisle, Pennsylvania, Strategic Studies Institute and U.S. Army War College Press, 2013. Petringa, Maria, Brazza, A Life for Africa. Bloomington, Indiana, Authorhouse, 2006. ISBN 978-1-4259-1198-0WM. Roger Lewis and Jean Stengers, ed. Morell's History of the Congo Reform Movement, Clarendon Press Oxford, 1968. Topic. External links African People website 50 factoids about Sub-Saharan Africa The Story of Africa, BBC World Service